Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to do a DIY Dollar Tree Farmhouse Tips and Dupes um, Part 9. And what I was inspired by was not one specific thing, but basically old advertisements on barn boards. Um, you can find them online at different places, mostly not for sale. But I was inspired by not only this witch Halloween sign, which says, come in my pretties, but it's barn board look, as well as this mason jar chalkboard look sign that I both found at the Dollar Tree. Well, again, we're going to use some white apple barrel paint. Um, this bottle I feel like I've gotten my mileage out of. And we're going to use some decoupage. We're going to use matte finish as my preference. These can be found at the Dollar Tree on occasion and a foam brush. And then some sort of straight edge we're gonna um, use my metal ruler but any kind of straight edge you have to paint up against for this technique so the first thing we do is just gonna remove the hanger and peel off the sticker and even though this um, barn board on the other side um, is the inspiration we're, we're gonna paint it on the back so I've just taken a light piece of sandpaper this is totally optional and I've run it in the direction of what would be the wood grain and I've done this just to add a tiny bit of texture to um, the painted surface. All right. And I'll show you. It doesn't really show up very much on camera, but you can kind of see it a little bit in real life. And then just wipe off whatever dust is uh, kicked up when you do that. So I'm just using the ruler here to show you how I've decided where I'm going to put the grooves between the boards. If you looked at the inspiration piece, there are grooves between the paneling. Um, it fits paneling. Otherwise, if it was born boards, you would be like a seam pushed up together. Um, and I'm just showing you that um, I left like a little space there. So um, you want to come in a little bit on each board uh, to create that space. Um, and then I'm using the foam brush and I just a bare amount of paint. Because we want a whitewash look, we could totally paint this 100% white and then go back and sandpaper over it. But that's like, why? Um, as you see, the dry brush technique on the particle board does leave the striations and almost a wood grain look to it. Um, this is not a skill that I have. This is literally me dripping paint down and pushing paint up. I'm using the tips of the brush to get that straight edge, holding the ruler down. Uh, make sure it's important that you hold the ruler down. Don't use too much paint because then it'll get under the ruler and it'll bleed and that'll be gross. Um, but like I said, it's a very minimal amount of paint. Um, and then when you do the boards in the middle, you want to make sure that you do the, the straight edge on the right side, and then we'll switch it over and the straight edge on the left side. But you see, we're going to come back to the straight edge on the right side because I kind of left like a space. It kind of kicks in a little bit there, which would have been okay. It just wasn't the look I was going for. And I ended up having to cut. I was ended up, <laughs> ended up covering it anyway. But I wanted to show you guys the full technique because in case you want to take this um, barn board uh, inspiration and draw something on it or write something on it um, you'll have like the painting technique down okay so what we've done is every other board and this dries so fast it's very very super light coat of acrylic paint and it's on particle board it's on MDF and it is chipboard and it is super absorbent so when you do that combination of acrylic a very light coat and particle board this is in real time. I am literally going, well, actually, I take that back. I'm sorry, this is in double time, but it's not edited for drying time is what I'm trying to say. I did those two boards, and then I was very confident to put the ruler back right over the first and second boards to go ahead and do um, the first and third boards to go ahead and do the second board. And I'm doing the same thing. Just make sure you leave that little space. Um, there's, like, no measuring. There's no taping. You're just going to hold the ruler there. Um, and then you see I reveal, ta-da, space. And then when it comes to um, the next board, and then we're just going to go ahead and do the last one. Um, the last one I do show you that I'm going to kind of make a mistake that I could show you how to fix it if you want to. Um, I did put too much paint on there, so I'm going to show you how. You can recover from that. Um, we're going to brush it off and then... Um, just going to use the edge of the brush to really push into the paint to try to get some of the excess paint off and to create some of those striations that we want to make it look more like barn board. Okay, and then I've spread that paint around a little bit. So um, I've taken it off the first board and I put it over on the first, the, I'm sorry, I've taken it off the last board and put it over on the first board. 
And again, just to create more of the depth of, you know, weathered wood, uh, wood grain and that sort of thing. Okay. And now I've done the same thing. Now, when we did the really easy barn board pumpkin, um, when we did the whitewash barn board, we took a popsicle stick and we scraped away the paint. But I'm going to show you here that while the paint is still wet, it's very wipeable. Um, this is one of the things I've just taken a really, it's a damp paper towel. I mean, it's a barely moist paper towel. I'm sorry. I used the paper towel to dry off the paintbrush. Um, and then I've used that to go ahead and wipe um, away the the overlapped space. Here's what I'm saying. See how it got like a little close at the top there? Um, well, I've just gone ahead and wiped a little extra away and then just gone back over it with the dry brush. Um, and I wanted to show you, I took the camera down off the tripod to show you what it looks like up close. You can't really get a great vision of it uh, from above. So I'm showing you up close how this really does look like whitewashed wood. Um, and I'm showing you here it's dry. As fast as that was, that's how fast it dried. I mean, I'm not kidding. I took the camera off the tripod, shot that, you know, 60 second or 30 second film, and then went ahead and it, it, it was dry already. So I pushed it off to the side. And now we're gonna work on this piece of um, art. Now, you guys know, there's tons of different art at the Dollar Tree. You can do any of the wall decals. You can do any verbiage, any kind of handwriting you want to do. You can put your family's name on there. This DIY is about the technique of doing the barn board as well as the technique and the inspiration of how to put um, sort of a ripped paper advertisement onto, um, onto barn board because that was really what my, my thought for it was even though this isn't an advertisement I wanted that feel so as you can see I'm putting my hand down on top of the picture that I want to protect and I'm ripping up to my fingers if I felt it started to rip under my fingers I just went ahead and I repositioned my finger I started to pull the paper in the other direction it is such a simple thing to rip paper like literally you can give it to a three-year-old um, no I'm just kidding don't do don't do that um, but I wanted to show you that if you hold your hand um, wherever you want to protect the artwork and you can rip up to your hand that is like the best piece of advice technique now this paper was a sort of a high quality almost like a photo paper and it was shiny and that's why it created these great edges now if you don't like the white edges like you want to age it you could just take a, um, a shoe polish brown stain brown paint um, brown marker even an old tea bag and just rub it into the paper and it will age out the edges. But because I was going for the whitewashed barn look, I didn't really care. I kind of felt like it looked like I was in the middle of a rehab and I was peeling the old poster off the barn board. And, and this is what was glued down as opposed to the edges that got ripped over time, you know. So now I'm taking the decoupage and I'm putting it on the back. Now here's another thing. When you're decoupaging, you guys have used Mod Podge um, hopefully before. When you're decoupaging um, normally, you want to put a nice coat on the back. You want to do this to, pre to prevent air bubbles. However, I am trying to create an aged old poster that was slapped on the side of a barn. So I am not putting a perfectly even coat underneath it. I want air bubbles. I want that perfectly imperfect look that comes with the farmhouse, okay? All right. Um, now I'm taking some more Mod Podge and I'm putting it over the top to protect it. And as I do that, I realize I just need to put a little bit extra on the edges because I want the appearance that it got, this is the part that was glued down um, and the edges got ripped over time. Um, I just went ahead and I put down whatever under the edges that I wanted. Um, and then I just used my brush to spread it around evenly. And again, this is the matte finished one because again, if it was aged over time, it would have lost its sheen. It would have lost its shine. So I wanted to make sure that that was important why I picked the matte finished one. But again, go for the look you want. By the way, this would have looked super cute if I would have just glued the actual thing down or if I would have cut out around the mason jar all of those would have looked super cute as well um, but of course I just wanted to do this look this was the look that I wanted uh, for my kitchen 
So I'm just peeling back. You know, Mod Podge is very forgiving on thick paper like this. It's not like we're doing napkin decoupage. You can't move that. But because there was, um, there was, uh, it's a heavy duty paper that I want to show you that you could peel it up and add some product underneath if you wanted to get rid of air bubbles. Um, as long as your paper is heavy duty enough. Okay. And I just have the perfect amount of air bubbles. That's what I want. See, that's how it looks. Now we are going to now let this dry. Um, Again, it's Mod Podge, it's acrylic. It doesn't take very long to dry. This is chipboard and paper and it absorbs very quickly. Um, um, if I could ever stop adding more decoupage medium to it, that would be great. I'm like Mod Podge obsessed. Actually, to be honest with you guys, there was just a tiny bit left in the bottle and I didn't want to save it and I didn't want to throw it out. So I just ended up adding it to my project. Um, but just to get the edges down um, was, was the most important part to me anyway. Um, so yeah, as I was saying, there are other things that you could do to this barn board once you have it all um, ready. And I loved this sign because of its irregular edges. It looked like p four pieces of wood that were set offset from each other. So that's what I, it really lent itself to um, that barn board feel. And it adds to the fact that this painting does look uh, like that, uh, looks like it is barn board. So now what I'm done is I've just added the rest of the decoupage medium to protect the paint job. Um, this is not a necessary step, but I wanted to again, make it look like it's been up there for a very long time. Um, and I really wanted to protect the paint job. And now we're gonna let it dry, regardless of what I said before. And now that it's dry, <laughs> we're just taking um, a tiny piece of sandpaper and we're gonna rough up the print and around the edges and maybe some of the paint, but not too much. Just gonna add a little bit of texture to it. And then I tied on a jute rope. Um, it's one giant jute rope, went in the front and out the back. And um, that's what we're gonna hang it by. And that's it. Um, again, I hope you really enjoyed this tutorial. If you do, give it a thumbs up. Um, if you have any questions at all, leave them in the comments down below. If you guys make this, I'd love to know what you pick. Some like old fruit crate labels would be so cute, wouldn't they? Um, and if you haven't yet, click subscribe. And when you do, a little bell will pop up. When you ring that bell, YouTube will let you know when I ever I upload a new video. And I hope you really enjoyed this farmhouse series, guys. Um, share with anybody you know who might be interested in getting a look like this on a budget in their home. Um, and as always, you take care. God bless. And we'll see you next time. Bye.